All right, so welcome back to uh, week three of our class. And according to the syllabus schedule that I have for you, uh, today we're going to be looking at the, at the plugin that uh, gives us the ability to sell products on our WordPress site. So we'll have to resurrect the WordPress site again. And by now, perhaps it's starting to become second nature, but uh, we'll do it again one more time. Uh, you want to get a copy of the project, maybe from my flat, uh, from my uh, network drive or your flash drive, and put it into your WW folder. Uh, by now, you've been seeing that the name of the folder that you put into the WW folder doesn't matter as long as that your your site is in is in a folder. And so I've put in there from the network drive a copy of last week's work, and I renamed it WP4 just so that when I type it, when I, when I log into it with, uh, with the web browser, I'm able to get to it a little faster. And inside also is just the installer and the archive. So a few times a few people have been unzipping the archive, and we don't need to do that because the installer will do it for us. So the site is in the folder. I need to turn on WAMP server. What's that? Yeah, where's the folder? Uh, well, what, one at a time first. Back here. Uh, which folder is the um, site? Well, it's in the network folder on the C drive, classroom data, drive Z, Z, um, Z. Yeah. Just what, one at a time. And then inside of there is the uh, Campus WordPress 2, and you're going to get a copy of last week's folder. So just what, one at a time. So your question over here? Well, that's the same question. I'm just trying to navigate to where the files are. OK. Uh, did you find the network drive? Yeah. And then Campus WordPress yeah. 2 folder? Yeah. 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 All right, so you want to copy that to your folder. And then and went to the So then the question over here was? Yes. yes. All right, so you should then start WAMP. WAMP on your desktop. You want to double click it and start it up. And remember, this is uh, something that I don't have in, in the notes, but you should have written down that uh, we want to turn on the that rewrite module inside of WAMP. So you want to click on your green W. Have it here. Okay, I'll be with you one moment. So you're going to click on that green W, and then you're going to go to Apache. Apache modules and turn on rewrite module. That helps us with our uh, with our permalinks. I 
All right, so I activated rewrite module that helps us with our permalinks. Um, my WP4 folder is in the WW folder. And now I will open a web browser and go to localhost. So remember localhost is our is our is our home screen for WAMP server. And what we need to do there is uh, create a database again. So what's the tool we use to create databases with? PHP my admin, yeah. So let's go to PHP my admin and create a database. And what's a good name for the database? WP4, sure. Anything we want, but we'll call it WP4, just the, the same name as the folder. So when you're in WP, uh, when you're on PHP my admin, you want to go to databases and create a new database there, WP4. I get the message that the database has been created. Good. What's that? You know, that's a, that's a good point. Remember last time I said something yeah. about collation? Yeah, I forgot. We forgot to do it. I, like I said, it doesn't seem to matter. But what what did I recommend last time that we that we should change that to? UTF eight. Yeah, way down on the. We already did it, don't worry. If you already click create and you created it already, don't worry. I forgot about that, sorry. But yeah, we, when we created it, I guess we should have put UTF-8 general. I forgot. Mine says Swedish. I think we'll be fine. Did we change it from there? No, because here if you say, if you type WP4 and then select uh, UTF-8 and click create, it'll say you've already got a database. Oh, I see. Or it'll say something in an alien <laughs> language. <laughs> Because we're trying to create a database that already exists. So I suppose we could go somewhere, wherever we can edit the database and look to change its collation. Doesn't quite matter. So um, I'll make a note. Next time when we come back, I'll turn that on to um, UTF-8. But uh, as I said, we've been going the whole class. We went the last month's class by leaving it by default. And it was in Swedish. And I don't think we ran into any problems. So next time, we'll put it on. UTF-8 and will be okay. But if you migrate to say GoDaddy, where uh, will It might depend on, on the server. That's why uh, it's a good idea to to change it. But I just I find it weird that it already has, for example, the MySQL database is in Swedish as soon as we turned on PHP MyAdmin. So I don't know if it's much of a difference to do that at, for, for our point, for our purposes. So we created the database. 
and we'll go to we'll go up to the address. Let's go to the address uh, localhost slash wp4 slash installer dot php. And that'll take us to the duplicator. Now, we are using my project. So uh, my login and stuff will be relevant on the next screen. But here, the same as always, localhost stays the same. The name of the database we just created, WP4. The username into, w, into PHP my admin is root. And there is no password. So once you activate that stuff, click Test Connection, you should see success. Okay. Alright everyone, if you can't find it, this is an issue we've had before, and look up here for a moment, Put, take your hands away from your mouse and look up here for a moment. The reason that is happening most likely is because you did not put the WP4 folder into the WW folder. What's inside of the WP4, just a moment, let, let, look up here first. What's inside of that is the installer file. So if you didn't put your WP4 folder, that's why this is not working, because it doesn't know where's the installer file. So check that you've got your installer file inside a WP folder. And if you don't, that's why when you type that address, it doesn't work, because it can't find it. So that's the problem there. Now, how many of you need a little help for that? The text doesn't matter as long as you've got the installer. Is that where it was missing? Yeah, but why is yours not called WP4? Am I supposed to change it? Yes. You changed this one. That's right. Because you're trying to access a folder called WP4 and it doesn't exist. And your, your folder is called the date. That's right. You can go back to the web browser and try to Okay. You need permission for the slash. I saw this That's not the right issue over here. Did I, was it because I was trying to change my name on here? Did you put a copy of your, uh, of that folder? I moved it here. Yes, that's step one, and that's step two. Mm -hmm. You can put it in the RAM folder. Yeah, that's my screen. Okay. I wanted to see what that was. Okay. 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 So, your project is no longer WP4, but first let's call it WP4. Or is it the address one? Maybe it's address. 
All right, so what we've got then is uh, we get this login screen. Uh, this we've done uh, before, so uh, that makes sense. I'm going to then turn on I have read all warnings and then run deployment. It's going to confirm one more time, so I'll click OK and let it, uh, let it deploy. Question? When you are booting my computer, I already created the Uh-huh. I don't think duplicator, that's why there's that big warning at the bottom that says, are you sure you know what you're doing? And once you click yes, then it assumes that you know what you're doing. So if you're saying you already have a database and you're running installer again, it's going to erase whatever might have already been there. So that's why it gives you that warning confirmation. Are you sure you know what you're doing? If you don't, then try to make a different database. Make sure maybe you make another database called WP5. That way you know you're putting your project into a different database, because I would not rely on those two little checkboxes right there unless you know exactly what you're doing. We've left it on uh, the default because we're creating a brand new database every time we come here. But I understand at home you might already have a database, but you have to decide what you want to do. Use the same database or use a new one. Yes? It's asking for the user and password very much. Yes, it's in our notes, and the user is root, and the password is empty. So I'm going to go to Run Update. The install report seems good. No red errors. Is anyone getting red errors? No? Okay. So uh, we will save permalinks, as always. And here's where it's going to start asking us about logging into the WordPress account. Now, because we're using my WordPress, um, remember we talked about we shouldn't use admin anymore. I made a new one, which is ADM Vic. So we've been using admin the whole time, and maybe that's what the notes say. But what we've done is we've created a new admin account to be a little more secure. So ADM Vic, but the password is the same, Happy Cat lowercase, no spaces. Uh, I'll keep this, 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 this page again. 
Okay, one moment. Let me finish this thought here. So when we get back to the permalink settings, the only thing we really need to do here is save changes. Yes. Well, this will get erased. This will go away once we go back here and do okay. step four. Well, okay, I got it. So did you say it was admin vic? Because I got an error. ADM vic. ADM. I'll write it up here. Okay. Look up here. ADM vic. The same as it's always been. Alright, so then here on the permalink settings, all I did was save changes. Question? I get a red box saying allow backing. Should we save this? Sometimes some of you will get a pop-up that says allow tracking, and that relates to the Yoast SEO plugin. So you can just click no. Uh, okay, so I'm finished with this permalink settings. I'm going to close that tab on the web browser, and it takes me back to the duplicator installer tab, and then we'll do step four. Remember I said, I hope in the future they put step four as step three, because I don't need to test the site until I do the file cleanup, I would say. So back to these steps here and click file cleanup, and that'll make that, uh, that screen disappear at the top that we saw a moment ago, perhaps. So you want to confirm, yeah, delete the installer files. I don't need them anymore. I've installed my site. I've resurrected the site. And the result here, it says, okay, we've uh, just removed your installer PHP files, so you can't get back to it anymore. We've removed the archive, the log, the actual raw data of your SQL database, and something installer backup, whatever that one is. And then to remind ourselves what our site looks like, a week ago was a long time. Uh, we want to go to visit site. There's the site. And back to the dashboard. Okay, so uh, what we'll focus on now then is the 